Hello guys, you're welcome. My name is FZ by Vianye. Thank you so much for joining. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back again. I appreciate your loyalty and I do not ever take it for granted. Yeah, today I have my husband with me. And if you guys um, watch our previous video, in case you did not see that video, I will insert it in the card so that you can check it after this video. If you saw our previous video, we spoke about how, like we mentioned briefly, how we knew that we were um, meant for each other, like how we made our decision. And today we just want to share from our own personal knowledge and the knowledge of God's word that we have, how you can recognize and understand the will of God for you in marriage. There are simple commandments in the Bible about, you know, choosing a future partner or a spouse. And it's just basically what is in the book of Corinthians where the scripture says that what fellowship adds light with darkness, what fellowship adds God with Belia. Like you cannot... You just have to, you know, be distinct and you have to know what the word of God says. Because the truth is, in knowing God's way for your life in marriage, it is not any different from knowing God's way for your life in something as simple as choosing what school to go to while you are choosing your institution of higher learning. It's not different from, you know, this, making simple decisions. So the same way the Holy Spirit communicates, we are making the very little decisions, it's the same way we communicate when I'm making a decision about marriage. It's not like marriage is a big, big, big deal like that. It's just one of the things you had to do in life as part of your journey in life. So it's not like it is one major big decision you have to make. Although, you know, it is right for you to make such decision properly because it is a lifelong journey. Especially when it is a Christian marriage, it is a lifelong journey. So you don't want to, you know, commit yourself to the wrong person right basically, you don't want yeah. to make the wrong decision so it's just it's basically simple for me how do i know that it was the one i was supposed to marry one i knew that it was a child of god that was number one for me as in it stood out clearly i knew it was a child of god i knew it stands in god's word and i know what it represents because in christianity our depth of knowledge differs and I knew how far he has gone in the Christian journey. So it was enough conviction for me. Then the second thing for me was, he, like there's this thing I learned while I was young. You know, God's love towards us is immeasurable. And if you are getting married to someone, you must be able to, you know, get married to somebody that will love you the same way Christ has loved you. Loved you. Just like the scripture says that, um, men, husbands, you should love your wife. So if the husband is meant to love the wives, what is his own definition of love? What are the traits, what are the characters of love that he possesses, right? Yeah. So if, if, if you are, you know, weighing it based on what the scripture says, it has to be, okay, the scripture tells us that love is kind, love is patient. It tells us every characteristic of love. We know all the fruits that you should see in somebody that expresses the love of God. So the question you should ask yourself is, does my partner... Or does this brother who is asking me out, does he know what the scripture says of, about love? Does he understand it? If he does, is he ready to portray the same towards me as his wife? You know, there, there are so many things that happen. Actually, if you went to a campus fellowship, you will see one brother in church having a relationship with three, four sisters. And you wonder, why is this going on among Christians, like within the circle of God's people? The truth is, misunderstanding what love is. And not having the right knowledge to how you should portray love is the reason why you will be convinced that you will not be able to make a decision at a point in your life that this is what I want and you should go for it. Yeah. I think you should come in here. Okay, so uh, what's up <laughs> is that? Um, firstly, it's not the point when you want to get married or choose a life partner that you start learning God's leading. Mm -hmm. This is something you must have known over time. Now, okay, let me, let me, let me put a disclaimer here. Uh, we are talking about how this is done the Christian way. There are various ways people get a life partner. We all know the story from back in uh, okay. Grand Bay. Like this boy, you are going to marry that guy. Exactly. You know, parents choose wives and husbands for. There is one way like that. There are people who meet in clubs and people have. There are people who do business arrangement. There is my father is rich. He's having this business. Contract kind rich, of contract. marriage. There are also. There is I want to migrate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me marry you for five months. You divorce me so that I have papers. Yeah, like I can't. There yeah. are also. But we are talking about the Christian stuff. So, firstly, you should have. Um, known God's leading, mm -hmm. if you intend to follow God's leading. See, don't mix it. It's what Jesus said when he said, you don't um, 
pour old um, wine, wine into, into a new, new wine. wine. You yeah. don't mix it. You can't mix God's leading and every other thing. Firstly, you must have known how God leads you. you must have done practice and you've known, okay, this is God and all of those things. Then you just apply. There are, there are, there are basic things. God doesn't want to be in loss with the devil. So, yeah, <laughs> At all. Yeah. He doesn't so, want. The first thing is, the person you want to marry must be born again, must be of the faith. Then, babe, let's talk about this born againism concept. Because people say, I am born again, I am born again. See, it's not about a brother that goes to church. No. It's not a brother that even speaks in tongues. It's not the keyboardist or the pastor or, or the, the pastor. It doesn't have... <laughs> it's not the guy that prays it, when the car is about to go this, to Even the devil can quote the scripture. He quoted the scripture. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, it, it, you don't have to, you know, judge by this person can quote the scripture yeah. or this person attends church or the way he dress, wearing suit, dressing let, like a so pastor. Let me get into it now. It's going to be First John 4, 7 and 8. I'm going to put now. Okay. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not is not of God and knoweth not God, for God is love. So how do you know that somebody is born again? Mm -hmm. They must exude love the same way God exudes love. That is, they must understand love the way God understands exactly. love. And they must act it the way it is. See, exactly. see, as a lady or as a guy, if somebody wants to sleep act. with you okay. or be with you for the wrong reasons, they can't hide it. Their love can't be the way God is. See, God's love is not selfish. If I said to my wife, for instance, that I love that, but it's not the way God loves her. If it's for my own selfish, to gratify my sexual desires and all that, it's not, I can't act it out. Along the line, somewhere along the I will get to say so, you know, I'll make advances, you know, mm. get beyond. And these are the clear cut things. You want to know if a person is born again, does he radiate love does he act yeah. out love the way christ acted yeah. it not just to you that he sacrificial wants to marry. kind of love exactly not emotions exactly it, it's not it's not in the feelings the feelings <laughs> come and go Me, since i've been in nursery one i've been having feelings for girls since i knew the difference between boys and, and girls, girls. <laughs> I've been having feelings for gay. I just know there's this group of those other people yeah. that are wearing the different clothes. Now. And there is one of them or two of them that look special. Once they talk to me like this, I feel like fainting. Like... <laughs> so I've had feelings, but it mm. comes and it goes. And Basically, it's not about the feelings. We are mm. talking about the love of God and evident, how it's evident is this person is not just going to be making sacrifices for you yeah. because they want to love you. You see it yeah. in how they treat other people. You see it yes. in their principles. Yes, very yeah. true. You see it in their principles, very the true. way they relate. You know that, okay, this person is of It's not just religion, not just playing church. See, 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 let me, let me give you. If you find somebody mm -hmm. who is only acting righteous or walking in love because they want to go to heaven, there's a red flag. Yeah. Because that means yeah. the day heaven is no longer in the picture. <laughs> you find a different person. That's true. But you see, we love because that is the nature of God. Exactly. That we are. And that's, who that's we the are. first thing. Yeah, that's the first thing you that's want to find out. Are. Not a God fear, even the devil fears God. Of course. <laughs> so that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is that is this person willing to spend the rest of their life with you? With you, yeah. And added to it that. Because that's to be a decision you, you should make ahead yeah. of time before you even decide I want to ask or I want to have a spouse. Or you should I want be to able say to yes answer to that question. That yes. The person I'm going to say yes to, can I spend the rest of Like if I wake up the next 30 years of my life, Am I Will, cool with it? Am I cool with it? Will I feel that I have made Am I ready to give it decision? all up for this person? Yes. Am I ready to go all the way with exactly. this person? Because the reality is, yeah, we are talking here as a couple. It's not as if we don't have this agreement. No. It's not as <laughs> Let's if... Let's not even go into that. We won't go into it, but we scratch it at the surface. It's not as if... I'll tell you about me. It's not as if I've not had times when I've asked myself, why did I marry this woman? You know that thing, why did I get married? I've been there. But the point is, you always have that reference point where you say... I made this decision and I stand by it. I still think it's a good decision. Like it is my choice. Yeah. Because marriage is a choice. It's it a is, choice. You choose to get That's married. That's how it works. You choose to be with that person. Yes, you choose to be with so that person. So it is my choice. It let, is what let me I give want. You, let me give you this. People say divorce is rampant nowadays and they are wondering why. No, it's because back in the day, the mothers of them, because they are usually the ones, they just stick in the marriage. Not because they are enjoying Not it. Not because they are enjoying it. I've had my mom tell me, I stayed married to your dad because of you children. Mm. It's not the best. He praises him. In, ah, Compared to Baba Lagbaja, he's still a better. 
Say you get it. It's the same to have a language. But he has told me that I've had him tell it to other, other people. Back in the day, people felt it, there's a stigma with getting divorced, and so they stick to it. They endured the beating, they endured the hardship. They trained their own children to school and just stayed married. And nowadays, it's no more so. There's nothing bad in being single. So there's that option that's on the table. So when we are talking about this, the way our parents stayed married, why divorce was lost, they chose to stay with it. You get to choose to stay in the marriage. And this is not to say that if you are getting married or if you are in an abusive relationship, you should, you should, you should stay. stay. There's no reason the why you should stay. There's no reason why you should stay. There's no reason why you should stay. Please, pack, pack your load. Your load. <laughs> <laughs> and go, please, because it's only living people. It's just that there are some excesses that you can cope with. Yeah, no, no, see, see. It does not have to be. See, no, this abuse, opinion, no, no, we are not a party once to abuse. He or she raises a hand to beat you. Once it happens, one. Well, don't wait for a second. Don't time. think don't twice. Don't say you forgive <laughs> and all those things. Go first. Mm-hmm. You see, first go. Let the person come and beg, and then let them say they have changed. And you should see and the, then you the will evidence. See, of... see there is like they say, um, character is a smoke. You will always see if this person will beat you again. Yes. Before they actually beat you. Yeah. If he has worked on that temper, or if he's working on it, mm-hmm. or she's working on it, mm-hmm. you'd have seen it. If she hasn't, you say, oh, see, change. I'm still <laughs> going away. Now there are people who are stuck. Because I, I think you know the couple that I was talking about where I was staying before. Okay, you yeah. Woman is stuck because she's not got anything doing, so uh, she doesn't have the economic. She's financially dependent on the man. <laughs> Try and not put yourself problem. in a situation mm-hmm. like that. So back to what brought us down here. Yeah. So you want to be sure that the person, the character of this person, after he loves God, the character of this person is something you can cope with. Usually, if it's someone who loves God, every other thing will fall into place yeah. because they have a similar template. See, we are not telling you that once you marry a believer. There will Everything be no will divorce. Be fine. No, we are not telling you that. No. But we are telling yourself, we are telling you that once you marry someone who loves God, at least you know the template they are working on. Yeah. <laughs> so if they are acting somehow, you can tell them you it's know not what in the drives template. them. You know mm, the spirit mm, that controls them. You know, in Toshinye, it's not. Because the truth is, babe, there are unbelievers that they have happy marriages. Yes, now. Ah, like what are you saying? 40, 50 years in mm. marriage and they are like beautiful. See, see, let me tell you, there are people who. We are not saying see, see we are not saying and they are unfaithful to each other. Mm-mm. They are faithful, loyal, like and committed then goes, to the she, end she, she of you get. the so, journey. So it's about understanding that person. If you understand what's driving that person, that's why we encourage believers to. Let me tell you one reason why it's a bad idea for you as a believer to marry someone who is not of the faith with you. Imagine when you are trying to fulfill the scripture as a man that says, "Love your wife as Christ loved the church." Now people often have that impression that uh, you can stay married to a woman except when she fornicates, then you have grounds to divorce. No, no, no. If you're looking at how Christ loved the church, even when the church was busy fornicating, following after all that God's Christ, Christ loved and gave himself. That's Romans 5, 8. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. So adultery, fornication, and cheating with someone is not good enough reason to put away your wife. Mm-hmm. In fact, how many times should you forgive your 70 times, times 7 in one day? Nye? So there, what he's telling you is that there is nothing that should cause you to say you won't forgive your spouse. Do you understand? And it's, now, it's very key in marriage. Forgiveness is very key. Is very you key. can imagine you are married to somebody who is not working by that principle. They will take your forgiveness for granted. They will ride upon it, take it to the river, wash it, they hang it out to dry, and they will not repent. And you will just be torturing yourself. <laughs> like emotional and torture. You get There's nothing you can do about it. You are busy forgiving. They are just stretching it. In fact, it's not competition for them. Let's see how far you, how can, far you can manage. And that's not the goal of forgiveness. No, it's not. So, Basically, so, if you have found the character of the person that he agrees with you, his life goals and life goals, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now you are getting somewhere. Then generally you ask yourself what you want in a man. Yeah, it's very, it's very like it does not rule out the fact that, okay, this is what I want. Because, see, there are children of God who don't want the same things like you do. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> if you are that person that is goofy, you like to be, you know, to express yourself. Yes, yeah, so. And your husband is the conservative type who does not even want to see you wearing yes. this string. Oh, hey. <laughs> So you get and you before, want to manage that one. before you now say and then you talk about these things you know you feel this person's vibes as a brother i tell brothers mm-hmm. that see before you say you want to marry a woman you must have, before you ask out that is you must have made up your mind on her see when they say you should love as christ love the church it's it, it, it's that you decide look at you have studied that well you have because it, your, she cannot be a stranger now it has to be somebody you have knowledge about you will be doing yourself a lot of good if you don't marry someone from off the shelf 
you know, you just went for a conference and you just saw and you just think it has clicked and you don't know jack about her. Even if you met her in a conference, you can meet her in a conference, but friends, you still need to know, know her. You need to know each other to this some person. extent before you, you put to, out see, the marriage proposal. There is the believer's template, which we say love as Christ loved the church. You need to know how they apply in that template. Yeah. <laughs> sure you get. So that you met them in a conference or you met at the church, it doesn't really... You need to know what this person mm-hmm. stands for. You need to know that they are legit. Because believe me, you always come back to that point where you ask yourself, why did I make this choice? Yeah. Okay. So so if all of these things are in place, then you, you guys can always come back. You can always revisit that foundation sure. of the love of God guiding mm-hmm. you. So as a man, you are... Everything Christ did... For the church. Everything Christ did, he did for the church. Yeah. Same way as a man, everything you are doing for your wife, doing in your life, you are doing for your wife. Forget it. Even if you are not in pie, you are not in it so that you can look good for <laughs> <laughs> You may not like it, but that's the reality. Yeah. And then for the wife, every the, the church is submissive unto Christ. Yeah. So the same way the the wife is submissive unto the other. Now take a look at this. I started, let me need it. <laughs> when people think submission, they think that it's ah, the same as subservience. To, yeah. Then they also, women, people, not just women, anybody has issues with submission. Yeah. Because if I submit myself to you, am I sure you not use me to mop the floor? <laughs> but we are talking about Christ and the church as the template. At no point does the church, I mean, does Christ ever use his lordship to his advantage over the church? Mm. Christ never uses his lordship to, he, he never actually sits down and crosses his leg and says, do for me. Mm. As in he gave himself, he died on the cross. He, he was has not finished dying. Not only has he died, he's also at the right hand of the Father interceding. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm. It's the nature of the Lordship of Christ is actually service. Yeah. See, when the scripture yeah, said, service. husbands, you are the head. They are telling you you are the servant. <laughs> yes, yes, you are the servant. That is in the scripture. The place of, that's why we say servant of God. The place of the husband is the place of service. The place of Christ was the place of service. You know, remember the other argument, who's the greatest in the yes. Jesus said the person who can be the servant of everybody. Peter yeah. didn't like it now. <laughs> and that is the does, way nobody it is. likes it. So as a husband, when when the scripture says to you, you are the head of your wife, and they're talking about an anatomical head, they're not mm. talking about business executive head Mm-mm. where you can just change the head. It's literal, like it's head literal, on, is an, yeah, yeah, on is the a, rest of the So body. it's the literal um, translation uh, example. Parable, illustration. The illustration, yeah. Yeah, exactly. They're talking about head and the body. What they are telling you is that you are to serve your wife. Mm-hmm. Like I said, everything you do, you do for her. Everything. So you know your lordshipness, you are trying to please her. Yeah. It's the same way Christ is trying to please the judge. Yeah. He gave up himself. He gave you the Holy Ghost. He puts you in the place of his bosom. He tells you, I'll come back. I'll prepare a place for you. He has done everything he said. Yeah. The same thing, you are constantly pledging yourself sure. to your wife. Mm. And then, so, so there are times when you guys will get, as in with that person you have married. See, they are correct. Who say that? Two years down the line in marriage, all the butterflies die. <laughs> <laughs> and the reality begins. Yes. The concept of uh, you see and then you get an erection when you see <laughs> <laughs> That's TMI. <laughs> it, it happens. Trust me, it happens. You guys have to consciously keep Work. up the flame. Yeah. Sure you understand. Mm-hmm. There are people who will tell you that the reason why I can't stay married is just because I can't be attracted to the same person. person over for how many years? Over the reality is, again. that's the way some people choose to learn it. But if you will work with the insect, of marriage, you want to go with how he said it will be. You find out that staying faithful. Just the same way, God is never tired of us. He's never tired of us. He, he has yeah, an infinite own. impatience. Exactly. And so, 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 so when you have, when you are saying you want to get married to someone, ask yourself, can I be eternity with this person? Mm-hmm. Very important. If I cannot be eternal with this person, you should probably play press pause. Mm-hmm. Honestly. I think about it again. And think about it again. The same way as a sister, I've spoken as a brother. As a sister, if a brother has come to you to say this, ask yourself those questions. Yeah. Basically. And that's, see, you are, as a believer, you are led of God. Yeah. Recognizing the leading is what we are talking about. Mm-hmm. And sensitivity. Sensitivity to it. God will not lead you to marry an unbeliever. Forget Mm-mm. it, that you'll be the one to make him born again. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> I said you choose to be born again. <laughs> no, be careful someone is not getting born again for you. If they are getting born again for you, be sure the salvation is authentic. It's genuine. It's genuine. We have told you it's inherent in the way Christ loves. 
Yeah. If we say God's love, you can say it's abstract because you've never seen God. But we have yeah. seen Christ. We have seen his nature. So that's basically it. When you want to make the choice of a life partner, you want to know one, that they are believers, that is, they love God. Because we are believers, so we are speaking from what we, we are speaking from, <laughs> from our faith. It's what works. Yes. It's what works <laughs> for us. So, okay, from that point, we want to know they are, they are believers, they love God, and the person loves God. And it's not just, this love is not just acting to you. see it in how they relate mm -hmm. to that person. Then there is that place of perfect peace. Yeah. Inner peace on your inside. Yeah. Um, there is um, a, a, a woman of God that once told me about learning God's will. He said, it's like when you try to cap a pen. I don't have a pen around there. He said, once you just put the cap on it, once it clicks, you know it has covered. Yeah. If it has not clicked, you just know. The same way as a believer, you just know, mm, this is the will of God. This is it. it is where it ought to be. See, once you don't have that feeling of, this is what... Like, if you don't feel settled in your mind you, about you, that person. You can have cold feet about settling down. As a man or as a woman, you're about to start sharing your finances, your life. You can't just pick up your mouth and walk and travel. You, you, maybe you have been saving your money, saying you are going to Dubai, you are going to Dubai. You suddenly can't go on a budget of X because somebody else is there. It has to be 2X. All Accountability. Those, sort of, those, those, those sort of feelings. Will be, you might be a, a private person. I always like to have my space, my bedroom. My, you, might, you might have cold feet. But outside of the cold feet, as touching whether you want to spend the rest of your life with this person, you will have that... Mm -mm. This is what you ought to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then so once you, if you think it's not it, give it time. Hmm. Time as a way of clarifying God's leading. So with time, clarity comes. Clarity comes. So the more, if you are not sure, I'm not sure if this is what God is leading me to do or it's my flesh. Give it time. Anything that is selfish, anything that is of yourself or himself, know that it is not the love of God. <laughs> you will see all those lines right yeah. there. By the time you give it time, yeah, you Could will see that. Uh, 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 my, I'm not having peace. I'm touching this our relationship. I'm mm. touching our future together. Or I'm getting more settled into it. That's it. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this video. That's that's all we have for today. Don't worry, you get to see more of my husband in this month of November. <laughs> this is our way of celebrating our anniversary. So yeah. you get to see more of him. We have so many more topics to you know discuss when it comes to marriage. And yeah. if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And don't forget to hit the red subscribe button. I'll see you guys in my next video. Till then, stay safe and stay blessed. Bye. Bye.